Hi everyone. This is the first in a series of videos which I'm going to call Pesky Questions. Pesky, remember, is that student that's in your classroom, actually in every classroom, that always wants to know why. It's not enough for Pesky to know how to do something. Pesky wants to know why it works. Today, Pesky is interested in the Pythagorean Theorem. So say you're presenting a lesson on the Pythagorean Theorem when Pesky asks the question that Pesky always asks. Why does the Pythagorean Theorem work? Before we get into that, let's first address a little background about Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher and mathematician and has been credited as the founder of the Pythagorean School. Pythagoras is most often associated with the Pythagorean Theorem, which states that if triangle ABC is a right triangle with legs A and B, and hypotenuse c, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There are numerous proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, but one of my favorite explanations focuses on similar triangles. So what I have here is a similar triangle ABC. In this triangle you've got legs AC or excuse me, CB and CA, and those have lengths A and B, and the hypotenuse is AB, which has length C. Notice in this triangle that C is the right angle. Also what I've done is I've drawn a hypoten or a altitude from vertex C to the hypotenuse AB. Remember an altitude is a line that is through a vertex and perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. So CE is perpendicular to AB. What CE does is it divides length side AB or length C into two parts. We'll call those parts X and Y. So X plus Y is equal to C. Now in order to use this information, we first have to notice something about these triangles. There are actually three triangles here. We've got triangle, the whole triangle, ABC, but then we've got these two little or tri smaller triangles, triangle BCE and triangle CEA. So we have three triangles total. Now let's first focus on triangle ABC, the whole triangle, and triangle CEA. Notice that CEA and ABC each contain a right angle and both of those triangles contain angle A. So by the angle-angle theorem we know that triangle and I'll go from the small side to the hypotenuse, BCA is similar to triangle CEA. Similarly, let's look at the smaller triangle, which we'll call BEC. BEC contains a right triangle, as does the whole triangle, ABC, and each of those triangles contains angle B. So what we also know is that triangle BCA is similar to triangle, in this case, BEC. Now that means that BCA has the angles are all the same as those in CEA BCA also has the same angles, and that's by the definition of similar triangles as BEC, so that also says that triangle CEA is similar to triangle BEC. All right, now th on the next slide, what I've done is I've actually separated out these tr three triangles. It's often helpful to do that when you're working with similar triangles. In the top I have triangle CEA with the sides that I know labeled. Uh, here's the small triangle uh, BEC with the sides labeled. 
and the entire triangle, which is BCA. Now, knowing that all three of these triangles are similar, I'm going to use some proportions. Okay, first of all, I know that the, let me go back to my pen, I know that the small triangle and the large triangle are similar. So I can set up a proportion. So I'd have, notice I have the hypotenuse in the short side, hypotenuse in short side. So I can say for the small triangle and the, and the total triangle, I can say that A is to C, short side is to hypotenuse, equals X to A. If I cross multiply, I would have from there that a squared equals c times x. Now, I also know that the medium sized triangle is similar to the entire triangle. So in the medium sized triangle, I have the hypotenuse and the longer side. So that's in proportion because they're similar to the hypotenuse and the longer leg, excuse me, of the entire triangle ABC. So what I know is that, let's say B is to C. So B is to C, longer leg is to hypotenuse, equals longer leg to hypotenuse in the medium sized triangle. So that would be Y over B. So when you cross multiply there, what you get is that b squared equals c times y. Now, I'm trying to say something about a squared plus b squared. Well, here's a squared and here's b squared. So what I'm going to do is add those together. So what I know is that a squared, sorry, a squared, there you go, plus b squared, what does that equal? That equals c times x plus c times y. Uh, but I can factor out a c here, so that equals c times x plus y. But remember, in our figure, x plus y equals c. So this actually equals c times c, which equals c squared. So using similar triangles, what I've shown is that a squared plus b squared equals c squared.